Hi, fourth grade. This is Ms. Shields. Um, this is going to be Bible lesson number three, and this will be um, continuing about Elisha, several different stories about Elisha. The last uh, story that we did was out of 2 Kings 5, and that was the story of how God used Elisha to heal Naaman of his leprosy. And then when um, Elisha's servant Gehazi disobeyed, his punishment was that Naaman's leprosy went on to him. So we're going to now go into 2 Kings chapter 6 and see more of how God's power is being seen in the life of Elisha. All right, now it seems like Elisha sort of has this school for prophets going on. There seems to be um, this group of people called the sons of the prophets. We're not sure which prophets. Uh, it could be the prophets that Jezebel killed, that these may be their sons that have grown up and are now following Elisha. But they seem to be staying together in sort of a prophet school and they're following and learning from Elisha. Well, one day, one of the sons of the prophets came to Elisha and said, um, the place that we're living isn't big enough. Can we please build a bigger one? And Elisha said, uh, sure, you can do that. And he says, well, could you come too? So Elisha went along with them and they figured if they cut down a bunch of trees over by the Jordan River, then they can work together to build a bigger house for them all to stay in. So no problem, they start chopping away and chopping down trees and making boards to build this new place when something absolutely horrible happened. Nothing earth shattering, but for this person, it was pretty awful. The top of the ax, which was made of iron, which is very, very heavy, flew off the top of the ax and landed in the water and sank to the bottom. And now this poor guy is so upset because he had borrowed the ax from someone else, doesn't know how he's going to get the metal, the huge metal head, the ax head from the, from the river. So he goes to the prophet Elisha and explains the problem. Elisha takes a stick and throws it onto the Jordan River and immediately that big heavy iron head floated on the water. It shouldn't float. It's made of iron. It's not supposed to float, but God answered Elisha's prayer and made the ax head float so that that son of a prophet was able to get it back and put the ax back together and be able to return it to the person he borrowed it from. Again, doesn't seem like a huge thing to us compared to some of the other miracles, but to this guy, it was pretty important. All right, then we go and change scenes here in chapter six, and we're back to the king of Syria again. I believe it's probably Ben-Hadad. I haven't seen any place where the king has changed over yet. And remember, this was the guy who was like best buddies with Ahab for a while. Well, I guess the best buddy thing didn't work because uh, the king of Syria decided he's going to go and attack the people of Israel the king of Israel, and uh, it's about that time to do that. So the king of Syria gets, gets kind of gets together with his uh, commanders, and he comes up with an idea, and he makes a secret plan, and he tells them, okay, we're going to attack the, uh, the, the, the army of Israel in a place that they don't expect, and he let the, his soldiers know. The king of Syria said, okay, I want you to go to this certain place, at this certain time, and then we're going to attack the children of Israel there. And seemed like a pretty good plan. Now, what he didn't know is that God had spoken to Elisha, and Elisha had sent his servant running to the king of Israel and said, King of Israel, don't go over to that place at that certain time because the king of Syria is planning to attack you. Well, of course. He didn't, he didn't go over there, but he did send a few people to kind of look and see if they were really there. And sure enough, the Syrian army was there waiting to ambush them. And King of the, the Israelite army did not fall into the trap. Well, I tell you what, the king of Syria was mighty upset. 
because somebody had told his secret plan. So he says to his commanders, okay, you guys, which one of you is over here on the king of Israel's team? Which one of you is a traitor? Who told my secret plan? And his commander said, nobody told your secret plans that's here. We're all on your side. It was the prophet Elisha. He told the king of Israel what your plan was. Well, the king of Syria is like, okay, well, I'm going to have a few words then with Elisha the prophet because, you know, th this isn't going to happen. So he sends his entire army to the city of Samaria to collect, to kidnap, to capture Elisha and bring him back sends the whole army out there after him. Next, by the time that the, the next morning had happened, Elisha's servant looks out the window and oh my goodness, the entire city was surrounded by the Syrian army. They had sneaked in in the night and surrounded the city. There was nowhere to escape and he's scared to death. Oh my goodness, we are surrounded. We're going to be captured. They're going to attack. Help, oh, help, help, help. And he goes to his master, Elisha, and he's very, very upset. Elisha is not. Elisha is as calm and as, as, as settled. He's not afraid. And he says, no, 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 don't, don't be afraid. We have, more, we have more for us than they do. We have more people on our side than the Syrians do. And then he prayed, God, open his eyes so that he can see. When the servant looked out again, this is what he saw, or something like that. He looked out there and he saw horses and chariots of fire filling the mountains around Syria, all around Elisha. So Behind the Syrian army was God's army. So no wonder Elisha wasn't afraid. He could see what the servant couldn't. Then the Syrians came in to capture Elisha, to take him away. And Elisha simply prayed and said, Lord, strike this people, I pray you, with blindness. Immediately God answered that prayer. And the entire Syrian army was struck blind in front of Elisha. And then Elisha said, oh, no, no, uh, come. This is not the way to the city. I will lead you to the city. So Elisha led the army that was struck with blindness into the city walls. And once they were safely inside, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And when the Lord opened their eyes, they saw they were inside the city of Samaria, completely surrounded by the Israelite army. The king of Israel says, oh, shall we kill them? Shall we kill them? Oh boy. And Elisha says, no, you shall not kill them. Instead, set food and water before them that they may eat and drink and then go back in peace to their homeland. So the king of Israel prepared a great feast and they ate and they drank and they were sent away in peace back to the king of Syria. And the end of verse 23 says, so the bands of Syrian raiders came no more to the land of Israel. Okay, guys, so uh, you can go back and reread the short story on the floating axe head, and then you can go ahead and do the Bible paper, the floating axe head. And that will be it for now. So I will speak to you and talk to you um, the next time. You guys take care.